Alrighty, we are going to make cadmium selenide quantum dots today, starting by weighing out some dry chemicals such as trioctylphosphine oxide. It's uh, not air sensitive and has a nominal purity of 99% that we prepared by distillation, starting with a 90% pure product. There are uh, commercial vendors that sell 99% purity topo and other ways of preparing um, purifying topo if you just Google that. We're also adding half a gram of tetradecalphosphonic acid. Uh, we actually have a video showing you how to prepare that material or it is also commercially available. And we are also weighing out some CAD acetate dihydrate that gets added to this 50 mil round bottom flask here. Okay, the next thing is uh, we are going to tie that into the Schlink line and degas it, pull vacuum, and put it under nitrogen. And we'll actually do that a couple of times because the next chemical that gets added, trioctylphosphine, is very air sensitive, uh, stored in a glove box. So you have to be very careful when handling trioctylphosphine. And when you add it to a flask, you need to do that uh, transfer from the glove box to the round bottom flask under air free conditions. Okay. Well, one thing that we do here that's very important is that you may notice that we have some pretty heavy clamps that we tie the round bottom flask into our hood with. That's because this procedure is, uh, the rapid injection procedure is done at 350 degrees and we don't want anything getting knocked over or broken open in the process. All right, now we're adding the septum that we're going to add all the air sensitive chemicals through and we're going to add a 10 mil syringe into the glove box. And concerning the glove box, uh, this is a good point um, in time to just state that if anyone watching this video wants to repeat what we're doing, but you don't have a glove box, or if you don't know what a glove box is, you should not be doing this. Uh, the chemicals we use from here on out are actually really quite dangerous. Now, there's actually even some more things to point out here as Marcel is getting the trioctylphosphine. COP is actually very damaging to the glove, so you can't let a single drop touch the gloves. It'll burn a hole through it. TOP is also extremely viscous, so it's difficult to handle unless you have a fair amount of experience with the glove box, which Mar Marcel does and has a good hand strength. Okay, now we're taking the TOP out, and we're going to add that to the 50 mil round bottom flask uh, through the septum using a 21 gauge needle. Now, the reason that's important is, is that that does not damage the septum such that we can pull vacuum on it. So we're heating this up to 100 degrees and pulling vacuum, and that is going to effectively degas the solvent of any air water, um, residual acetic acid and whatnot from the cat acetate. But we've sped up time here, as you can tell. We also have a pressure gauge on the Schlink line to know when the system has fully degassed, which is kind of hard to tell otherwise. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to get the trioctylphosphine selenide. So what we do is we put the 50 mil round bottom flask under nitrogen gas, uh, get the temperature system set to 350, and while the heating mantle is heating up to 350, we get 1.5 mils of 1.5 molar trioctylphosphine selenide, also air sensitive and stored in the glove box here. And now we're ready for the rapid injection. The first thing we do is we drop the heating mantle, and that's so that the stir plate can make good contact with the stir bar. When you inject, you don't want the stir to get lost, uh, and you're about to see the injection here. And you can tell that you've made quantum dots by the color change, which is pretty much instantaneous. Now, another funny thing about this particular procedure is we inject and leave the system alone, and those are the dots we get. Sometimes people will uh, add the heating mantle back and reheat the solution to make larger dots. Uh, in this formulation, that would actually destroy the size distribution. Now, the dots are not very bright. Uh, nice green, but they're not very bright, but that's why you make core shell quantum dots, and we're going to post a video on that shortly where we can make nearly 100% quantum yield uh, quantum dots using the, um, the shell method. And the, the value of this particular formulation, though, is that the size distribution is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you for watching, and we hope this was informative, and be sure to watch our other videos.